Hello everyone, it is me. Welcome to Momming with Migraine. It's Friday, October 15th, 2021, and I would like to extend to you a very ironic, happy Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day. Many of you know that I had a miscarriage before we had our rainbow girl, the one who was born. I'm now pregnant again. This is my third pregnancy and hopefully my second Earthside baby. Losing that first baby was one of the biggest shocks in my whole life. One of the biggest rocking of one of the, I don't even, I can't even think straight. It was one of the most profound, like world jarring things that I've ever been through in my life. And I happened to take a video of myself on the day that I was going through our miscarriage, even though I hadn't started up my YouTube yet. I started my YouTube, Momming with Migraine, in April of 2020, but I actually tried to start it sooner and couldn't because I was going through a miscarriage and I just didn't feel up for it. So in those early videos, April of 2020, I was actually grieving the loss of our first baby. And then in the slightly later videos, May of 2020, I was hiding that I was pregnant with our rainbow baby. I have to sneeze. <coughs> Ow! Sneezing is the worst. Last October, I had in my calendar that I wanted to share about quinoa. We named her quinoa and what it was like to lose her, and I really just haven't felt ready to talk about it. But I do finally feel ready to share the clip that I took on the day that I miscarried. Um, I t again, I didn't have my YouTube yet, so I took it for us, just for us to remember what was going on at that time in our lives. And also, I wanted to be able to see what I was like when I was processing something that was one of the worst things that I've ever been through. Let's address why we named her quinoa. Well, week by week in your pregnancy, the baby gets compared to the size of whatever they are that week. So it starts with quinoa, and then it goes to lentil, and then coffee bean, and then eventually you get up to bigger and bigger fruits. So the very first week that I knew that I was pregnant, we were calling the baby quinoa. We did move on to future fruits and other beans and such, but when the baby was lost, it was really quinoa that resonated with us as that baby, because that was that first week. We had so wished for this baby and we wanted it for so so long and we were so excited to be pregnant and we finally had a baby to love and it was a baby that we were calling quinoa so even though we tried to move on to the other fruits and each week call the baby by that fruit quinoa is the only one that really stuck so when we lost the baby we continued to call her quinoa and that's that I'm not a fan of trigger warnings, but I think that this video does deserve a trigger warning. The footage I'm going to share is not something that I ever thought was going to see the light of day, and honestly, I haven't really watched the whole video in a really long time. I'm not 100% sure what's going to come up in the video, but we are talking about the loss of a life. We're going to be talking about death. You'll be watching me grieving and crying and very depressed, and those feelings kept going even after the delivery of our rainbow baby. I thought I felt ready to talk about that stuff now, but I think for this video I'm going to skip it. Going through a miscarriage is... I can't describe it. This is why I didn't put makeup on for this video. I knew I'd start crying even if I tried not to talk about her. There are so many things about miscarriage that people don't realize. and One of them, I think, is just how common it is. So many pregnancies end in miscarriages. So many mothers and families, fathers too, go through this devastating loss in silence and they don't feel like they have anybody to talk to. I mean, in our case, we had been told you're not supposed to tell anybody that you're pregnant till you're 12 weeks, so we were kind of hiding it from a lot of people. And that just made it worse. That just made it so that when we got pregnant again, I was like, I want to tell everybody right now because I feel like everybody got robbed of being able to celebrate her life while I had it growing in me. I didn't want that to happen again, even if it ended poorly again. <laughs> Nobody talks about how when you get pregnant with your next pregnancy, you just can't get attached to it. You can't love that baby the way that you loved the first baby because you're so scared that if you let your guard down, then it's going to hurt even more if you lose the baby. 
there's just this constant worry. Every cramp, every little speck of spotting, I was just so worried about our rainbow girl because I knew how bad it was when I lost the first one. There's this doubt in my head about whether I even could carry a baby because you know me, I faint. I'm a mess. I get all these migraines. I was like, what if it's me? What if it's my fault? I think all women do this. What did I do? Is it because I had sushi before I knew I was pregnant? Is it because I drank that tea that I wasn't supposed to have more than one cup of? What did I do? What did I do wrong? Probably nothing. It wasn't your fault. I didn't realize that I was going to feel guilty for moving on enough to love our daughter. Does that make sense? Like if I felt love for our rainbow girl, I felt bad that that love was I don't know, able to happen? She doesn't replace that baby, but is it bad that I was able to let my guard down? And then I would also feel guilty anytime I didn't appreciate the rainbow baby because I know how hard it is for some people to get pregnant. I know that some people go through many, many miscarriages or later term miscarriages. And so I would feel guilty for not appreciating our rainbow girl anytime I was grieving the loss of our previous baby. People make it seem like your rainbow baby is going to fill the hole, somehow fill that void. But the rainbow baby doesn't do that. Children are not replaceable. And the grief can be so sudden and so random. It was just random Tuesday. A couple months later, I went out and checked the mail, came back in. It was a bill. It was a hospital bill for the day I miscarried. Oof. Right in the freaking gut. Here's your bill. Here's your bill for the day your daughter died. <laughs> and I also get random moments of grief now when I'm playing with baby A because I love her so much and I can see her personality coming out and she's just so unique and beautiful. And sometimes I wonder what her big sister was like and I wish I could have met her under better circumstances. And then I feel bad for that too, because I should never feel that way, because if I had met Quinoa, then I never would have met Baby A. The two could not have existed in my life together. Both of them being in my life was not in the grand plan of the universe, and I think that this trauma really is what pushed me into really believing that everything happens for a reason. It's what got me going back to church and that kind of thing and trying to find a reason for all this suffering. And that's really, that's one of the only things that's helped me get out of this is finding my faith again. But it's still just so hard to talk about. I have all of this love and all of this joy. I have another baby on the way and you get to learn their gender next week. I have a little girl who I love so dearly, but there are just some things that are out of this world that I don't understand. What I know is that I loved that baby with all of my heart. I still love her. I always will. I never even met her. I love her so much. It makes me happy that I got to be her home for, for the short time that she was here. All she knew was me. I got to carry her right under my heart for every day that she lived. And that is an honor. It's not one that I take lightly. Who you got this, Jen. I talked a lot about mental health last week and that I knew how to get through a lot of really bad times because of my times with disability. If you guys missed that video, you gotta watch that video from last week. One part that I skipped over is that after that awful hospital stay, I went home. I was home for a couple of days. Everything was normal and great. I was bonding with the baby and she was perfectly healthy and I was just so relieved that my body successfully made a human after failing on the first one. I, I know it wasn't my fault, but this is just, you know, your brain. Well, I was taking a shower and I passed a blood clot, a pretty sizable blood clot. And it took me right back to the day that I had the miscarriage. Because on that day, I was in a lot of pain, and I was standing in our shower and dealing with the pain by being under the running water for some of it. And as you can imagine, it was a crampy and clotty, bloody mess, and passing this blood clot spiraled me right back to it. 
Now, I had just gone through the whole pregnancy, anxious that something was going to happen to our rainbow baby, and she tried to come early. She started trying to come at 32 weeks. I started having contractions, even ones that were really regular, and I went to the hospital because they were three minutes apart. But she ended up holding on all the way until 39 weeks because I was just staying in the bathtub the whole time. But she tried to scare us too. I had some bleeding in the first trimester. That was scary too. I was just so afraid of losing this baby. So even though I was bleeding, which is expected after you deliver, I was not expecting these big clumps and some of it, yeah, it just, it spiraled me back. And that's something else that you don't anticipate when you've never been through a miscarriage. A lot of my PTSD, a lot of my panic attacks were because of that blood clot or the cluster of blood clots. It took me many months to retrain myself to be able to go into our shower. I had to do very gradual exposure therapy. I spent many hours sitting outside the shower door, crying, staring at the shower because that was the first step to getting into the shower. I'm talking months, but I knew how to do it because I had gone through disability. Step by step by step by step, I slowly started taking showers again. And that was a year after the miscarriage. That was after a successfully delivered healthy rainbow baby. Miscarriage is really rock your world. I realized I was ready for therapy and that's why I went through BetterHelp. BetterHelp sponsored my last video, the one on mental health that I talked about earlier briefly. They really helped me out. I encourage you to go back and watch that video for more tips and the stuff that I really loved about BetterHelp. But now, after the fact, they gave me an affiliate link, so I do get a small commission if you use my link and sign up for BetterHelp. I'll drop that down below. It's betterhelp.com slash migraine. You get 10% off your first month by using my link, and I will get a small commission for referring you at no additional cost to you. Now I'm going to switch to the video of me on the day of the miscarriage. It was right when I got home from the hospital, or within a couple hours of getting home from the hospital, and I knew that the bad part was incoming. At the end of it, I'm not going to come back to say bye or anything, so I'll say right now, make sure that you hit like if you appreciate this video, if you appreciate me bringing content that is more difficult to talk about. Comment below, even if it's just a heart, to show some love and support for the babies and mamas who are going through it on this holiday. And make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with your notifications turned on for a happy video next week about how this baby boy or girl is doing in there. You finally will get to hear the gender reveal. And I'm going to share more details about our family planning process. What we were thinking going into having kids with me being disabled, how many kids we want, how things have changed now that my disease has progressed, but also now that we have a new diagnosis. So all sorts of happy family planning things going on next week. Subscribe, notifications on, thumbs up and comments really do help, and let's go to this video. I'm sorry for the sniffles. It's not a good, it's not a good look. Thanks for being here, and I love you. So, today I'm going through a miscarriage. It's really awful. <laughs> um, the the part that I, I never would have expected about having a miscarriage is that yes, it's physically painful and yes, it's emotionally painful, but the connection of the two is just gory. It's really gory. I have to, of course, feel the physical pain and that kind of amplifies the emotional pain. The emotional pain is amplified by the crazy, like, postpartum hormones that I have to go through now while I'm also grieving the loss of my first child. <laughs> of our first child. It's just so much. And to top it all off, I, I have to feel the, the sensation of my body doing the horrible act and it hurts and it just feels really mean it feels really mean to do to 
into a little thing that I loved so much that I never even got to meet. Um, buddy wants it. I'll be right back. I just recorded a whole thing and it wasn't even recording. I must have pushed stop instead of play. Okay. Um, I'll try to remember something. Speaking of Buddy, he, um, he keeps coming over and putting his head on my chest and, and giving me cuddles. And it's really sweet because, um, I think he really knows when I need the cuddles. I don't think he understands what's going on, obviously, but, but that's really great. Um, it also sort of feels like the world is shutting down outside. So when we, um, when we went to the ER this morning for the, for the miscarriage, um, the, the weather outside is really weird. It's a really light snow, but it's also super, super windy. So we're getting berms of snow, um, like lining our house and inside the screens and between the, the glass and the screens. Um, I'm sure it'll happen again, but it's the first time that it's happening right now. And, um, it's also coronavirus outbreak. It just got declared a national emergency like yesterday. So, um, um, so being out there today and, and going to the hospital, it really felt like an apocalypse, like the world is shutting down and now I'm going through this really sad, um, thing and it's weird. It's just weird to go through. Like the weather knows, nobody even wants to go outside and I'm so heartbroken. Um, Brian went snowboarding today. One thing that I really wanted to, um, maybe want to remember later is, um, Brian's going night snowboarding today and we just happened to be in the ER the morning of, and when we were on our way home, he offered that, um, uh, he not go snowboarding and he could hang out with me instead and make sure I'm okay and all that. And, um, and he left it up to me and I told him to go because... I mean, him being home and moping with me is not necessarily going to make my grief any better. I mean, I, I appreciate the support, but I have so many people that I can call for support or, or whatever. I don't feel like I really need him to be here and dealing with all of this. And, and it's a messy process, so I'll be needing to, you know, clean myself up privately a lot. It just didn't really make sense for him to be here when I'm going through something so odd. Um, and everybody grieves in his own way, and I know that he'll have a much better day today being out snowboarding than he would sitting here watching me suffer. It, it just, and, and now I get to grieve in the ways that I feel will help me the most, like making this video. Um, I don't think I would have done this if he was here because it's, it's just so personal and it's something I can have for myself and... Um, if I, if I'm brave enough to share later, maybe I will, um, with, with Brian or with friends or whoever. Um, I, I don't know what strength I'm supposed to get out of this horrible situation or, or what lesson I'm supposed to learn or if it's just something that, you know, it's just testing my patience a little bit, but usually I really feel like everything happens for a reason, so, um, I'm, I'm just looking forward to figuring out what that reason is. I'm already, um, I'm noticing a, a softness in my heart that I've never felt before. Um, this is really like my, since this is my, like, it's our first baby. It's my first time grieving as a mother. It's, it's my first time having like a negative, a, a sad time as a mom. And that's really weird because I, I didn't feel like a mom or see myself as a mom when I was pregnant. Not yet, anyway. But I feel like today I'm getting a little taste of that, of, of what it feels like to care about, um, to care about your offspring and to care about your husband and, and his loss too. So, so I can, I can see it 
even though it's really dark right now, I can I can see that it's it's already made me feel stronger and it's already um brought Brian and I closer together, which is ironic because as I speak, he's driving away. Um I'm really thankful that I have him and that we were able to get pregnant. Um, and so I, I hope that we're able to get pregnant again when the doctor clears me to, you know, my body can handle it again. It'll be a few months, but, but yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. I wish I could have met this baby. I wish I... I just, I wish I could know a lot of things about them, I guess. I wish I could have seen what they looked like and what they enjoy, you know, what kinds of food they hate or love, what they eat, raw broccoli or cooked broccoli, everything. Would they be graceful like me or clumsy like Brian? It just sucks that... Our first baby, we won't, we won't ever get to know these things. And I know it's stupid to like put weight on first versus second or whatever, but somehow just since we're humans, that's what we do. So it feels bigger. I, I wish I had a little one to cuddle now to be thankful for, because I know that would help. That would be a definite silver lining. It's hard when you have to wait to to understand the benefit. Because that's kind of the only thing that usually gets me through dark times is, is that positive. I guess Brian's my positive. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have him through this. He's, he's a textbook model husband in every way, every hardship, every triumph. <laughs> he's really, really great to me. All of my health conditions, everything that's ever happened. Brian's been here. He's so good to me. And so is Buddy. And my boys take really good care of me. And oh. Little one missed out on a lot here. These, my boys are really, really great. Okay, I feel like I'm rambling now. I'm gonna go. There's a part of the video that um, I just realized I missed um, that I recorded the first time that I thought I was recording, and and I actually missed it the second time that I went through. So I'm gonna sit back down now and try to remember that part. Um, so the part that I realized I didn't record is that Brian is out snowboarding right now. Um, on the way home from the ER, Brian, oops, Brian did offer to not go snowboarding and, um, and he, he left the choice up to me. And not only do I think that was incredibly brave of him to offer, because he's a man of his word, so if he offers it, he, he will definitely do it. Um, I forgot. Um, I don't, oh, it also means that he trusts me a lot, um, he trusts that I won't get mad at him, like that that what I say is going to be true. That if I say he can go, then then he can go, and I'm not going to backlash later. Um, and I guess it kind of piggybacks on that. But oh, crap, I forgot. I'm sorry, I'm getting a migraine. I just can't remember things. It's really what I need today is a migraine. Migraine and a miscarriage. Yesterday was Friday the thirteenth. I don't remember if I re-recorded that, but. This might turn me into a believer of Friday the 13th. Um, oh, yeah, so the miscarriage started yesterday on Friday the 13th, and um, I was just thinking, actually, in between the, the video recordings, I'll get back to Brian, in between the <laughs> video recordings, um, I was thinking about how today is Pi Day, and the miscarriage started on Friday the 13th, and that's really unlucky, but today is Pi Day, and, and today is, like, when I'm going to start being able to kind of see the sunlight again and get through this a little bit, um, starting my grieving process. 
So, um, big contrast, right, between, like, the evil that's associated with Friday the 13th and then just, like, the fun that's associated with Pi. Anyway, back to Brian. Um, I also love that it, it shows that he trusts that I'm going to be logical with my feelings um, and I'm going to tell him whether I truly feel like he needs to stay home. Um, to me, the two are separate in my head, the, the first example of this and the second, um, but I realize that's a, not in my head. That might not make any sense, but um, him trusting me not to blow up is different from him trusting that I'm going to be open about my feelings and that I'm not going to do something vengeful or try to like, take advantage of the situation just to, you know, out of spite, make him not get to go snowboarding just because I don't get to go snowboarding, that kind of thing. I, I love that he trusts my integrity and my honesty, like that I will stick to my word and it sounds the same. They're so similar, but Maybe not my grand general figure it out better than I can. Okay, yeah, so I'm just going to tack this video onto the end of the last video. <sighs> tough day, tough day. <sighs> It'll be all right.